for those of you who are not aware, I, I do encourage people to look into these other markets around conservation. Look into PCGS and look at their the services they offer around conservation. PCGS is the coin side of Collectors Universe, PSA's big brother. Um, you know, these are mature markets and they offer conservation as a service prior to grading. Uh, and also look at CGC, uh, which is the uh, comic grading uh, giant and the services that they offer around conservation. They, they steam press and dry clean all the comics before they're, uh, before they're holdered. They also alter restoration services where, you know, items are recolored and cor corners are rebuilt and pages are restructured. Uh, and then obviously in the fine art industry, the act is even is even more invasive in terms of their ability of rebuilding paintings and doing all sorts of stuff. So, uh, you know, I, I encourage people to take a look, take a look at it. I think it'll open people's minds. Um, and I think in trading cards, we very much need a similar service to emerge. Um, and I will uh, tell people I am in the works of trying to find that service. This one's going to be fun. What's up, guys? We got a fun topic today. As most of you likely know, uh, there's been a lot of discussion with PSA and card cleaning lately. This is a topic that I have not spoken on publicly, but I have a lot of thoughts and a lot of, um, say, impassioned thoughts. So, what's the rundown? The story goes, for the brand new 2023 Panini Prism product, one of the biggest cards in the product, if not the biggest card in the product, was recently pulled. It was the 2023 Panini Prism Black Victor Wimbignana, one of one, one of one. There's two one of ones in the product. There's a black and there's a black finite. The black was pulled by, and I believe it was NorCal Sports Cards. Of course, it's in California. Fun. So, what is the controversy? The controversy is, uh, upon getting the card, this NorCal Sports Cards made a shout out to not only PSA, but also Kurt's Card Care for the help along the way, uh, presumably in terms of improving the condition. And for those of you that don't know what Kurt's Card Care is, Kurt's Card Care is a product that is sold by Kurt's Card Care, uh, and along with a lot of other products out there, there's different uh, other products that people use to clean cards. And we're using the term clean uh, very loosely because we're going to get some thoughts on and, and opinions on w what it means to actually clean cards. So PSA has spoken on this. Earlier today, Ryan Hodge from PSA posted on X. There's been lots of conversation about the card in recent days. I got to hold it and its cousin while they were both in house at PSA. PSA stands by the original assessment and our graders did not detect anything with the surface to deem it was altered. That said, I wanna clarify, PSA does not approve of any chemicals or foreign substances being added to the surface of a card to improve the condition or appearance. If we detect that this has happened to any card, we will consider it altered. So PSA has finally taken a stance on something that has become so pervasive in the hobby. And this is a disgusting, disturbing trend. And I say it's disgusting and disturbing because as I look across the landscape, especially as I just recently took a trip to California, the great state of California, and went to the Burbank show, a show that I enjoyed, I was taken aback by the number of card booths where the dealers at the booths were not selling cards. They were selling card cleaning services. Essentially what these card cleaning services entailed was using products such as Kurt's Card Care and or other products. Uh, one of the most common products that is used is a Meguiar's wax. On a very Cool topic. I'm going to be talking about how to fix the surfaces of your sports cards. This is the most effective way that I have found to do so. Begin with, secondly, you're going to need the wax. So there are a couple different ones that I have tried. Uh, the first being Kurt's Card Care. That's kind of how I found out about this. The second one, and I was just reading some comments on Facebook of other things to try, is Meguiar's, and this is actually a car wax. Meguiar's is a little bit more abrasive. So when I say that, it's going to be a little bit more gritty. And while it is 
probably more likely to get out scratches. You can also damage the cards. People are using this on cards. The controversy is the purists, such as me, who have been in this hobby for a long time, believe that this is card alteration. Unfortunately, people who are very progressive and new to the hobby see this as an opportunity to take advantage of the marketplace and begin offering services to restore cards back to uh, mint or gem mint condition. They're using these products to improve the condition. As we all know, especially chrome type cards, today the quality from Pupini and Tops is absolutely abysmal. It sucks. So whenever you get print lines or surface scratches, what these individuals are doing is they're using products like card care and then these waxes and they're literally scrubbing and removing the coating and the gloss off of the card and they're sand blasting it down. It has a fine grit to it and it's removing the gloss. And by removing the gloss, it is removing the scratch as well as any print lines. Now, depending on if it's deep enough, obviously it's not gonna be able to remove everything, but if it's light enough and faint enough, it can remove it. And there's video evidence of people who are doing this. The thing that blows my mind about this is it is literally out there in the open. <laughs> it is out there in the open, guys. Like, at the Burbank show, there were four to five booths. And I can't exactly specifically say what was happening at those booths, what, what was happening, but they were using these different types of products. And I remember walking by one booth and I was overhearing one of the card doctors, because that's what I'm gonna refer them to. Hey, I'm a pharmacist, these are card doctors. They're improving the condition of the card, so doctor. Uh, these card doctors were talking to potential patrons and saying, this is what we can do. This is how we do our service. And I remember making a comment. I can't remember what it was. I was there with a buddy and it was a derogatory comment out loud. And a dealer next to the card doctor's table overheard me say that. And he misinterpreted what I had, what I had said. Um, cause my comment was derogatory. I was like, I can't believe that this is out there. I mean, PSA's booth is literally a hundred yards away and there's four of these little phonies out here who are just doing this stuff and it's so pervasive. And the guy's like, yeah, I send all my cards to this guy that need, you know, assistance. He does a great job. I highly recommend him. And I'm just like, dude, the doc, anybody who ever watched the docs channel back in the day, rest in peace. As the originator and innovator of the live video box break, I am sometimes amused as to where it is gone. From the very serious collector, busting boxes, trying to do his thing, to the Burger King busting boxes, baby. However, again, just like anything else, there's always an angle to everything. As my father used to say, there's something rotten in Denmark. Well, and while we cannot change what has already been or already has occurred, we can change what will be. He has to be rolling over in his grave right now. So we've talked about the controversy. These individuals from California, the great state of California, waxed that card using Kurt's card care, presumably. Send it to PSA, the card gets a PSA 10. There's also speculation that the card might be off center left or right. I'm not really talking about that, but some products were apparently um, used on this. And presumably they were sent to Kurt's Card Care. PSA has finally spoken on this and I'm glad that they have. But what I wanna speak to is the card doctors out there and those who think that this is okay. And this is where we're gonna do our little rant. Because, I mean, the way that I participate in the hobby, this is a, a fun hobby for me. I've been in this hobby for a very long time. And naturally, in an unregulated hobby, there's gonna be people who jump in who have the only exclusive purpose with participating in a hobby for the sole purpose of making money. And because that's their sole purpose, they're gonna be doing shady things. And trust me, card doctoring such as this is not a novel concept. Cards have been prone to shady activity. We're going all the way back to the days in vintage where vintage cards are soaked. 
soaked to remove creases, literally submerged in water, left out to dry, pulled apart so that you can remove wrinkles. That's been commonplace for decades. In the early 2000s, whenever patch cards, and I gotta go on a tangent right here, there is a special place in cardboard hell for all you people out there who have no idea what the difference is bet between a game jersey and a game patch. Just put the boxes by the- Hello, Satan. Saddam. Did you miss me, buttercup? Shame on you. Mom won a day. Get it right. Mid 2000s, early mid early 2000s, whenever patch cards became prevalent, there's all kinds of famous names out there that you can look up who completely ruined their name and their reputation, namely out of Mooresville, North Carolina. Basically, if you saw a card out of Mooresville, North Carolina, you knew it was adult, it was adulterated. It was it was authored. Game use patch cards that may be single swatch or two color swatched with multicolor patches. Again, low lifes that have no skills to offer the marketplace, have de no development in their professional life whatsoever because they haven't developed any skills whatsoever. They resort to card doctoring because that's the only value that they can do. They can only lie, cheat, and steal and get away in a hobby that's unregulated. That's not the only thing. Trimming. Trimming has been prevalent for years. Also, for any of those cards that are prone to you know, edge chipping, corner dings, think 86 Fleer, recoloring. There's people who have been recoloring things left and right. I guarantee you right now I can go take a Michael Jordan base card. I can forge a pretty awful forge of a Michael Jordan autograph and sell it right now on eBay for 50 bucks. People have been doing that for years. They've been very sophisticated with Mickey Mantle and Babe Ruth. Just look up all the Operation Bullpen stuff from the 90s, the biggest scams out there and with millions and millions of dollars of fraud with the FBI getting involved. There are numerous cases of fraud in the hobby. This is just another example. And it's coming from people, and this is where I'm gonna get really personal to the people out there. It's coming from the people who literally have nothing to offer in this world. They have no skills. They have done nothing. They don't have a, a career. They don't have a job. Most of them are over, overweight. They're lazy. And they're stuck on Ozempic. You guys let me know what you think this thing would have graded before I started. And now that you've seen it afterwards, I think we're sitting somewhere around a nine if everything else um, is good. You lazy people stuck on Ozempic, you're going to keep my profession in business for a long time. You're authoring cards because you're lazy, because you didn't do anything with your life. You didn't go out and get a degree. You listen to Father Gary, Gary V. You listen to all of the motivational hustle porn pushers, the kings of motivational hustle porn. Go get the bag. Go make that money. You know, the Andrew Tates, the Grant Cardones, the Gary V's, the people who said that sports cards are better than 401ks, those people. Because you have no skills, because you have no skills, you listen to them. And because you listen to the people who said that sports cards are better than 401ks, guess what happened? You lost your ass the past two years because you're dumb, because you have no analytical skills. And guess what? All you had to do is follow my small podunk channel, 4,200 subs. That's all you had to do. I got a fucking six year history, making money every single year. Bam, 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 six years straight. No, you're trying to go copy off of the big people, sports cards greater than 401k, the investor boys. Okay, keep doing that. And because you failed, now what are you doing? Now you're going out here and trying to find the next cheat code to get ahead because you can't analyze cards that are gradable. You can't buy cards that are gradable. You don't have the analytical capability. You could, you could learn it. You could come up with the skill set. You could. All it takes is a little bit of time and effort, but you're fucking lazy. You're lazy. So that takes me to today's state. We have a lot of new entrants into the hobby. And this is a different type of video compared to what I normally put out. But this really hits me right here. Because guess what? I do this for a hobby. Yes, I have a business. It is incorporated. But I have seen so much shady shit and I've kept my mouth shut. I, it, the YouTube landscape is a wasteland of idiots, of stupid people. This is supposed to be a hobby that people enjoy and the most popular channels are those who have zero knowledge. 
That's who you're listening to. That's the hobby. That's the main predominant voices in the hobby today. It's a hobby. If you think that these are just widgets that you're here to make money off of, get out. Honestly, get out. Don't want anything to do with you. Yes, I started as a collector, and yes, I flipped and made money in this hobby over the years, and yes, that's the predominant way that I participate, but I also collect. And guess what? My cards can literally all burn down tomorrow. I can literally light them all on fire, and guess what? I've got a career that pays a lot of money because I put in work. <laughs> I actually put in work. I didn't listen to the Gary V's of my time. I didn't listen to Grant Cardone. I actually listened to people with sound advice. I went to college. I got three degrees. I spent 12 years in school getting a professional degree, a master's, a bachelor's, top five grad school or prof you know, professional school, top five residency program. I didn't start making real money until my 30s. But all you people, you see these people Make money quick. Make money quick. That's the new post-COVID way. Let's jump into sports cards. You're the same people who jumped into NFTs. I know you're the same people who are waxing little dicks on cardboard of pictures of men who you will never be able to achieve because you're fat and lazy. And you're sitting there washing those little dicks and waxing them. That's what you're doing. Instead of being smart and learning about what cards to go out and buy, $60 sells a PSA 10 for 300 all day long. There, free tip. Instead of that, you're out there trying to get the big hit. And you're just doing it wrong. So the good thing is you came to my channel, you stumbled on my channel, and all the people who have followed me over the past six years on this channel, and have followed me on message boards, and I've interacted with and really built a small, nice community of friends who enjoy this hobby, who enjoy watching sports, who enjoy rooting for people in sports who are virtuous and are genuinely good people. You know, th this, is, this content is not for my subscribers. This is for the new people who come into the hobby and are hearing this for the first time, who have read this on Reddit and seen the discussions. They've seen people debating this. They haven't stumbled on my channel. They haven't heard what this type of feedback is. That this is in fact card alteration. Whether it's patch faking, whether it's trimming, whether it's recoloring, whether it's soaking, whether it's autograph forgeries, you name it. This is just the same thing. It's in the same vein. Now yeah, there's gradations to this cardboard hell that we're talking about in terms of which one's more severe, but it's on the same spectrum. It's in there, it's the same classification. You're the same people who are going to take Ozempic because you're too lazy to go to the gym. <laughs> too lazy. Just saying, man. I'm just saying. So one of the few common, I guess, rebuttals that you'll see in this is, well, you know, Tyler, the big thing is, you know, these are like art pieces. So in art, we see that, you know, there's restorations that happen all the time. Here's the thing. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Your base Donruss optic Trevor Lawrence is not f***ing art. It's not. It's a dollar box card. It's going to be worthless in 10 years. Got a better one. <clears throat> You'll often hear them say, well, you know, Tyler, they really can't detect this at PSA or SGC or BGS or any of the third party companies. So if they can't detect it, there's nothing wrong with doing it. <laughs> Let's go down with that logic. Let's pursue that a little further. Okay, so let's say that, uh, so here's what I would recommend. Because there's a lot of new people who are coming into this and seeing this for the first time, and you're seeing people like the founder of PWCC saying, we need to okay this practice. Because you're seeing it at a big card show that you're going to for the first time, you're thinking, wow. This is, you know, approved. There's really nobody around here who's saying you can't do this. It's an unregulated market. It's cards. You can do whatever you want with them. You can lick them. You can kiss them. You can chew on them. You can eat them. You can burn them. You can do whatever you want with it. But whenever you're trying to slide it by a third-party grading company to deceive them, now it's technically not illegal, but it's pretty damn horrendous in terms of right and wrong. 
I would say it probably classifies you as an asshole, just like a card trimmer, just like an autograph forger, just like a patch faker, just like a card soaker, just like any other scammer out there in cards. Can you imagine? Literally, you ruin your reputation over cardboard. Cardboard, little bitty pictures of men, and all you're doing all day is scrubbing their dick to make it more mint. <laughs> Dude, come on now. But these waxes and emollients and Meguiar's wax and filler and all these things with the grit to it, oh boy, that, that's a little too much. That's too much. So that's kind of my take on it. You kind of know where I stand now after this video more than likely. We need a lot more voices out there. I'm seeing people who are posting content. I'm not watching their videos because it, to me it's just, it's absolutely ridiculous. People can say like it or not. This stuff is here to stay. No, it's not. No, it's not. That's, that's bullshit. So is smash and grab in California here to stay because they're not prosecuting it and the Californians are okay with it? I don't know. That shitty state can, can stick with that. But, you know, the more people who actually publicly out people who are doing this and saying that this is wrong and also saying that behavior in society, that's, that's kind of how it is. It's peer pressure. It's calling out deviant behavior. It's kind of how societies and structures and communities pull themselves together. If people are just allowed to co run rampant and any behavior becomes acceptable, then it's anarchy. So for the sake of the cardboard community, we're going to prevent anarchy from happening and we're going to begin calling this shit out. And I recommend that everybody out there that has a moderate size channel or higher, I'm just a little, you know, peon in the corner of YouTube. I get no views compared to these big wigs out there who are just doing deals for the sake of getting clicks. Those people need to be talking about this because they're influencers. So you need to start asking them, what do you think about this? Why don't you put out some content about this? I'm glad PSA said something, but... Looks like this card went to Kurt's Card Care. Uh, I would not be wanting to buy the black 101. I think that I would like to have that black shimmer 101 instead uh, because it doesn't look like that one had anything touch, touching it. So that's all I got, guys. Um, it was a fun one. Uh, let me know what you think.